Hello, and welcome to another episode of All Day Edify. I'm Natasha, and this is my handsome, loving, and supportive husband, Corey, and we're your host. Wow, thanks, babe. I appreciate the kind words. Um, it is great to have you all with us today for another episode. We have a great show for you today. And if you were with us in our last episode, you know that we talked about a number of different things, but we, all, we talked about how important it is for men and women, mostly in the, the minority communities, to have a good understanding of their mental health and how valuable that is. Absolutely. And so today we're going to go just a step further in discussing something else that we tapped into in the last segment, which is communication. Our guest talked about how some people are sometimes more eager to express the areas they need help in than others. All right, babe, come on, make it plain. He talked specifically, especially about how women, credit women, that they are more willing to raise their hand and say, hey, I need some help and I'm going to go get the help that I need. And men are not as uh, willing to do that and as open and expressing that. Okay, so yes, he did. So he did talk about how it benefits us as minorities or simply people who realize they have room to improve and take a page from our male and female counterparts in other cultures. Absolutely. And we talked about how there are just so many stigmas out there uh, that are associated with us enlisting uh, the kind of support services that we need sometimes. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, like with women saying, hey, I need to I need to be a spa day. I need to go relax and get a massage or something or I need tutoring or I need to go get me a, a, a physical trainer, a personal trainer or something like that. There's so many stigmas that um, sometimes we fail to say that, hey, I'm OK, but I want to get better. I don't want to just be OK. I want to be excellent. So who do I need to go see to help me to get there? Absolutely. And this approach to improving ourselves can apply to all aspects of our lives. Like you said, whether it's tutoring, seeking a mental health therapist, getting a finance, getting financial guidance, whatever. Right. And so today our topic is and it's in the form of a question. It's a good question. Are women better communicators? And we're going to talk about that. Wow. Are women better communicators? So this, I can already see right now that this is going to be an interesting conversation. Yes, um, it is. So if you noticed today, when we opened up our segment, I was very complimentary of you, you know, and that is not me being manipulative or anything like that. It is more directed toward me being able to seize the opportunity to improve our relationship one day at a time. And that's beginning with this moment. That's me expressing the value and appreciation I have for you. I can honestly say it hasn't always been that way. I mean, we've been going on 18 years of marriage and it's it hasn't always been like that. But one thing that I do know that, you know, I've I read this book before and it's and to me, I think it's a must read. And it's called The Five Languages of Love by um, Gary Chapman. And so this book actually teaches you how to express love in your spouse's language. And some of the languages here are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service physical touch. But not only does does Gary have this book, he also have, you know, love languages for children, singles, you know, um, men, women. So, but this specific book is to me a must read because like I said, we talked about words of affirmation, which is the first one. And so my thing is, um, you know, sometimes people think that you know, somebody should already know how you feel about them without you having to say that. But words of affirmation specifically is any spoken or written words that confirm, support, uplift, and empathize with another person in a positive manner. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how, you know, with the opening, it's kind of like words of affirmation. That's an example of words of affirmation. Absolutely, babe. You're right. We both had to learn some things along the way um, to help us to be better at 
making sure that we are working on improving our personal selves, but also enhancing our relationship and cultivating one another's growth. And so that's always important. And so we want to apply this approach, not only in our personal uh, relationship in regards to marriage, like you say, uh, there are some ways to improve our relationships with our children. The same thing goes for uh, our siblings or even our colleagues and our subordinates when we lead people. And so there are always opportunities. We look for ways to improve ourselves when we're seeking after career advancements and different things like that. And so the love languages apply in different ways and work is another example of that. You know, there's always opportunities to be aggressive and say, hey, I want this promotion or I want to be able to afford this house or this car that I really value. But what about the relationships and the messages that we send in strengthening those relationships? Because that's what it's about. It's not about having a relationship that still exists. It's about strengthening that relationship to ensure that it still exists and it's being effective. Yes, babe. So this absolutely applies to relationship building. We know what we want. And sometimes it really takes being intentional and strategic, not manipulative. Both mm -hmm. men and women, we pick up on when people are being manipulative and we know, but yeah. strategic and intentional to position ourselves to capitalize on opportunities. Yeah, I love that word choice that you have there. Uh, you use the word strategic and intentional. And that is different in the, in, because you compare it to the word manipulative. Why is it that you compare strategic and intentional to the word manipulative? So here's, 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 I'll just put it like in a practical term, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll use kids for an example. So many of us have kids and not all not all kids, but some have, you know, an approach to where they're loving and complimentary and they do things outside of their character. And our first response is, OK, what do you want? Right. And so we know that they're up to something and we know that they're being slick because any other time we can't get them to do things or be loving or proactive until they want something that's being manipulative. Got you, got you. So when we're met with this approach, our instinct is to assume that there is some kind of manipulation that's taking place. You're trying to run game on me, right? That is our instinct. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. It's hard not to think that way. Once you develop a pattern that says, mm -hmm. this is who this person is, or this is what I should expect when I encounter this behavior or character type. Absolutely. I agree, babe. I agree. And, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, there's a lot of times that because I'm always, you know, uh, so intentional in uh, observing my surroundings and my interactions with people and uh, improving over it, you know, over time, I have a tendency to um, observe people and to begin to develop a thought process that filters into how much of this that is being communicated truly is um, within my best interest. You know, sometimes when we interact with people, we'll look at and think and believe that either this person is really trying to mutually communicate things that benefit both me and them, or they're being self-serving or they're being self-centered in the way that they're approaching it. So I like to put, you know, little indicators out there because I want to cut to the chase to find out sometimes. Um, giving people the benefit of the doubt you present um, indicators to give people a chance to either get off on the off ramp and say, no, this is not the road that I'm trying to take our communication or our relationship down, or they'll stay on that road. And that's always an indicator that deep down, maybe you don't care as much about my own best interest because you want to make sure that whatever your self-serving agenda is, is met. Wow. So, so babe, so in the communication process, we have three vital criteria. So we have the message, we have the sender, and then we have the receiver. And so mm. the message is the key component to all of this. Basically, mm. the message is the star of the show, not gotcha. the sender and not the receiver, but who? The message. You're right, babe. 
Absolutely. Yes. And so, so many people don't understand that when you're a sender, your top priority should be the message. I agree, babe. I agree wholeheartedly. And I want to say even the same would apply to the receiver. You know, the same applies to receiver is that nothing is greater than you have to sometimes suppress your thinking that somebody is um, being self-centered and things like that. You have to be mature enough to suppress that and say, OK, you know, we say it all the time, chew the meat and throw away the bones. You know what I mean? Because you want to receive the message. And there's this great misconception that uh, because we have so many uh, different deficiencies in our lives that prevent us from being able to have that level of maturity in our personal lives, our, 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 our spiritual deficiencies and shortcomings, um, our psychological, emotional, mental, like we talked about last week, these deficiencies prevent us from being mature enough to do exactly that, chew the meat, throw away the bones, because whether I'm the sender or the receiver, the message is what is the primary focus of that communication. Absolutely. And, you know, like we said, and as a result, whether you're on the job, in our homes, in our families, out in the community or whatever, you know, we tend to see ourselves as greater than the roles we play as messengers who are able to unite and form, uplift and enlighten the people we come in contact with. Absolutely, babe. Wow. And, and that's so powerful, but it's so true. It's so true that, you know, we have difficulty seeing ourselves because of our deficiencies. Like I said, sometimes we have trouble seeing ourselves and our role in the communication process as being um, about anything other than the message. And so, but as we are having this discussion, you know, it's important that, um, you know, and I can't help but consider how much of an impact this has on the perception of both genders, male and female. Because again, this topic is about, we're asking ourselves the question, are women better or greater communicators? I agree. And I believe that the discussion we had in our previous episode also points out the reasoning. Yeah, yeah. And so in that, if, again, if you missed it, uh, we are elaborating on how it is that we want to learn different things from different cultures. And we see it now more than ever um, here in Western culture, here in America, that women are being entrusted with greater degrees of responsibility, um, being relied on as leaders, um, as spokespeople for large organizations and, and different things. And so that's because women are being entrusted to be able to effectively uplift, enlighten, um, and unite people, uh, both peers and their subordinates, so that everybody is working as a part of a one team environment. Um, and so that's it's, it's a lot easier to trust people when their communication says that this is what they embody. And so I think there's some room for everybody of all character types uh, to be able to improve. In fact, if we look at it, women are being trusted with even greater responsibilities now to where, like, we have a, a female vice president. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And we're not that far removed from having elected, not once, but twice, a male who is of African heritage, who is um, being entrusted with the highest office in the country, commander in chief. So why is it, babe, that these different character types are being entrusted with greater levels of leadership and responsibility? Well, I believe this points more to their character types than their gender or their race. And so, um, so here's the thing that I think, it takes a lot for people to buy into your message and to look beyond their perceptions and their personal filters to focus mm -hmm. their attention on your message. However, it is the character type that these two leaders possess that enables them to be attentive enough to the receivers of their message and pay attention to their audience and win mm -hmm. them over with the way they convey their message. And so yes. here's something that I want to kind of hit you with and just you know, kind of, I want you to take it in before, you okay. know, you get to talking about it. So I ran across this article from 2013 and I'm just going to read it. And so this article basically says, 
you know, it talks about because the, the, the topic of the show is our women better communicators. And so this actual article from 2013 says, are women better communicators than men? And so basically, um, I'll just read a little bit here. It says several <laughs> studies in the last 30 years or so have consistently indicated that women are better communicators than men. Hmm. Some of these suggest that women use many more words than men, in some cases using anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 words a day to a man's 5,000 to 10,000. They also suggest that women's capacity to listen with empathy is superior to men's on average with females being more prone to wait and let a man finish their sentences, not interrupt so often in general, and better paraphrase and summarize what has been said as appropriate. And so this, um, this article really, it goes into detail and it says a lot, but I wanted to point that out. And so a couple things, number one, this is actually an article from 2013. And then on top of that, the article inside the article it said studies shown in the last 30 years about mm -hmm. how right. it's been consistently indicated that women are better communicators so i just kind of wanted to get some feedback from you in regard to this article wow what stands out to me the most is you know like when you initially told me about that is that a 30-year study um that's a lot of time and so yes. that there's there's a lot of room for developing, like we say, patterns. You know, our kids give us patterns. Our kids haven't even been there that long, but a lot of times we it's pretty accurate because we know them well based on the pattern and the repetition. And so the things that stand out to me about that, aside from such a, a long period of time, is a couple of things that you said. Um, the difference between, say, for instance, five thousand words versus ten or twenty thousand words. I'm not going to go there with talking about how that, that's a lot more talking than a man does. All I'm saying is just that the other parts of that give some enhancement to what takes place in those additional words. You said the capacity to listen, but also more prone to wait. And so this sends out the message to me that a person is patiently waiting, listening, paying attention, and then responding with, here's what you said, a better summary, doing a better job of summarizing what needs to be conveyed in regurgitating the message or what needs to be, okay, I'm taking it all in, everybody's speaking. Now I'm listening, and it's from a leader's perspective. Now I'm listening, and I got something to say that should be effectively conveyed and impactful when I say what I need to say after listening, not interrupting, after taking it all in. And so I think there's, again, a lot for people who lack this particular character type of being able to pay attention, listen, take it all in, not interrupt, and then be able to convey effectively what needs to be said to impact the people around you, to uplift the people around you, to enlighten the people around you. And so I think that that says a lot about how women can really just by demonstrating all those characteristics in that study have an impact and help men that they have relationships with, um, men that they work with or are colleagues with um, be able to improve and other women who don't have those character types. Because I believe it's really about character type. And so, you know, that brings me to question, you know, now that we're talking about it too, is, um, you know, when we talked about communication being in the workplace, I know that sometimes, you know, let's, let's kind of discuss this a little bit, um, being an effective communicator. If we're on our job and we're getting a lot of feedback, you know, in regards to being an effective communicator, like, oh my gosh, you're such a good effective communicator and you're so easy to talk to and this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. But at home, it, ah. doesn't, it doesn't reflect you being an effective communicator, whether it's with your spouse or your children or anything like that. 
I mean, what what do you think about that in terms of, okay, so is what's the problem? I mean, everybody else is telling me that I'm effective and I know how to communicate, but right. here at home, you guys are telling me, or you're telling me that I'm not effective. Not to say that some people aren't overall effective communicators, but there are some instances where you are more effective in one setting than another. What do you, what do you think about that? Wow, that's a good, that's a good question because it, I think that there's a lot of factors that go into play there. Like we talked about earlier, um, you are, you might be, it could be a number of different things, but I'll use this as an example. You might be on the job chasing the carrot. You're on the job and somebody's dangling the carrot of a promotion or an advancement opportunity in front of you. And, or if just because you want to make sure that you got job security, you're on top of everything. You know who the people are that you need to please on the job and therefore, it could be that you are paying that much attention and you were responding in a way because you prioritize that job security or that advancement opportunity above the way that you feel like you're obligated to or required to treat the people at home or that you have personal, not professional relationships with. But then again, the flip side of that is that maybe the people on the job who you have so much in common with because you are passionate about what you do on the job, you might have educated yourself and spent years driving towards uh, being able to function in that role. And here you are among a bunch of people who have the same things in common and y'all got a lot more to talk about. And maybe at home, they're not appreciating you the way that they should. Maybe at home, there's not as much common um, things to communicate about. So it could be a number of different factors, I think, that plays a role in that. Absolutely. And I know that you have a, you know, a couple of other examples about, you know, yes. helping, yeah. helping people feel good about losing. Yes. <laughs> and that's always important, babe. You know, that's always been my quote is that, man, you help people feel good about losing. I, you know, um, in times when people, you leave people to their own devices, they could do something that may not come across the right way to you. And that could be in our personal relationships too. I know in the early stages of our lives, our marriage together, and, you know, we were both working professionals and, you know, going to school and things. And sometimes we, as we were growing and getting to know each other, we'd have differences, but we've always made it a point to exercise the biblical principle of not letting the sun go down on our wrath. So we agree that, look, we ain't gonna go to bed mad at each other, but one of us and me particularly, I might feel some kind of way about something that I'm not, I'm gonna apply some wisdom and not drag it out, be the dead horse with trying to communicate that thing, but I have to be strategic. And so helping somebody feel good about losing might mean that I'm going to prepare you a nice meal the next day or the day after so that we can get to the point to where now we can sit down with fresh thoughts and say, here, babe, I did not like or agree with this. I just didn't want to continue to harp on it, but I think it needs some attention. And so when we effectively communicate that way and make sure that now there's an understanding and a mutual respect. And if we could, babe, there's a slide here that shows us different ways about how to go about the communication process. Uh, there's a difference in the verbal and nonverbal communication. Verbal com communication is you're talking about uh, things like a person's voice inflection or their tone. Sometimes, you know, you and I are talking sometimes and I get passionate. We tend to get heated or, or something like that. Not disrespectful. It's just that I believe in what I'm saying and I'm raising my voice or you may believe in what you're saying and we have to say to each other, why are you raising your voice at me? You know what I mean? And that's our cue to one another to like, okay, I am getting a little bit hype. Let me tone it down a little bit, but I want you to understand what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's just some, some examples and like clarity and concision that matters being concise with your words. But on the nonverbal side, you see uh, things like listening and uh, active listening, active listening being that you're paying attention, you're listening and you're sending a message to the person on the receiving end as you are the sender that you're giving them head nods and you're giving them an intent look that says that, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, I feel you. I, I, I see what you're where you're coming from. Your body language could be that you're slumping or your shoulders are down or you just feel like, you know what, you're dragging this out too much or here we go again. Right. But the facial expression was that's one of yours. You know, go ahead and tell us yeah. about that. So I know we talk about face expressions often, you know, mm -hmm. you and I, because I know that, you know, a lot of times when you're 
out speaking in public, um, a lot of times you get that frown on your face because, you know, I know, you know, that you're just very passionate and in tune to what you're expressing and what the topic is because you're so passionate about it. But I'm sitting in the audience and I always have to smile just so that you know that that's my cue for you because you need to kind of lighten up on how you're expressing yourself because a lot of people may not know you and know that, you know, you're the way that you're expressing yourself and the look on your face, you got that crease in your forehead and stuff like that. Mm. They don't know like, but I'm still friendly. You know what I mean? It's kind of could sometimes be intimidating. And so I do that smile to show you that, hey, you need to kind of lighten up, still be passionate about what you're doing. But right now you're frowning and it might not be as edifying, you know, okay. if you know, you're frowning or got the, you know, the right. line on your forehead. <laughs> right, right. See, she started off complimenting me. Now she beat me up a little bit. But, uh, but no, you're right. And that's always helpful for me. It's helpful for me that I can be really engaged in what I'm saying and I'm feeling and I look and see my wife smile and, and that's my cue that my nonverbal is preventing me from being effective in connecting with that particular audience. And so we have to have that in mind that when we are in those roles, it's important that we are not only just communicating, but that we are being effective in our communication. It's important to be effective. And so, yeah. um, yep, yep. And so, uh, that kind of brings us to a point to where, you know, again, uh, we always enjoy um, these conversations. We enjoy talking to each other, but we also enjoy kind of being able to share some of our thought processes with other people because we just normal people who done live life and bumped our heads a little bit or learn some things along the way. And we like to be able to edify and encourage other people. And so, you know, we're kind of running out on time here. You know, we can kind of talk for a long time, but, you know, we need to wrap it up on today. And we actually want to well, thank you for joining us, you yep. know, for this show. And so here at All Day Edify, you know, our aim is to uplift, inform, and enlighten you. All day, every day. Do you provide human services? Are you an entrepreneur that contributes to society? Do you have access to tools and resources that facilitate growth and development? Come be a guest on our show. You can email us at alldayedify at gmail.com or send us a message on our Facebook page at All Day Edify. A new way to watch TV on the web and on Roku, the High Dimension Network. Check us out on the web at www.high.tv. That's high.tv on the web. And search us under High Dimension Networks on Roku. Yes, we're on the web and Roku. And we're bringing music, news, fashion, culture, and lifestyle. The lineup, that's my jam. Top 10 from the streets. And we know sports. New to the game, legends in music, and so much more. It's about time. Something new in TV. Brand new flavor on the web and on Roku. High Dimension Network. Check us out on the web at www.high.tv. That's high.tv on the web and search us under high dimension networks on roku yes we're on the web and roku high dimension networks that's h-i-g-h-d dot tv a new tv channel sundial networks showcasing urban culture music lifestyle fashion talk shows comedy movies and more tv lineups slow jams game of life Sundial Soul, live from the smokehouse, the battle, new versus old, 60s and 70s time machine, all that jazz, and on Sunday, special programming with religious roots, gospel soul, R&B classic gospel. You can find us on the web and on most smart TVs at www.sundial.com. Dot TV. That's sundial.tv. And on Roku. Yes, Roku. Free. No subscription needed. Search for us under Sundial Networks. That's S U N D I A L Networks. Sundial Networks. Web TV Media is looking for marketing and salespeople, experienced or no experience. 
all are welcome. We're also looking for people to help with two brand new TV networks. We are looking for marketing and sales people as well to work in a safe and friendly atmosphere. Please send email to webtvmedia1 at gmail.com.